Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we're looking at forces on inclined planes. The problem reads as this. We have a 400 Newton object that is accelerating down a 25 degree incline. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.19. And we're asked to solve for the force of friction, the normal force, the mass, the net force, and the acceleration. This is a big problem, guys. We're given three key pieces of information, plus another one. The object is accelerating, so I know I have a net force that is greater than zero. So let's begin by drawing our free body diagram on the inclined plane. So let's begin by drawing a free body diagram. This is going to be my inclined plane. And I'm going to draw my massive object on the inclined plane. It's accelerating down the inclined plane. We've already been informed that the mass, or I'm sorry, that the mass, the force of gravity is 400 newtons. We're going to make that negative 400 newtons. We've also been informed that we have an angle of incline of 25 degrees. And we also know that the coefficient of friction of the surface, I'm just going to pull that out with the over here, is 0 0.19. I think the first thing we can easily do is solve for the mass of the object. So the mass of the object, we can easily use the force of gravity. The weight of the object is negative 400 newtons, and that's going to be equal to, my Fg is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And so we throw this in here. Let's go over here, I guess. Force of gravity equals mass times gravity, so my negative 400 newtons, we'll just use this here, negative 400 newtons is my Fg, equals my mass times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're going to use some algebra to solve for our mass. So let's crunch the numbers, guys, and solve for our mass. And we're going to find out that our mass is going to be equal to 40.8 kilograms. So we're looking at now a mass of 40.8 kilograms courtesy of using our negative 400 newtons as the weight of the object. So we've taken care of mass. Mass is dealt with. We don't know what the acceleration is so we can't find the net force yet. So we're going to start blowing up, tearing apart our force gravity into perpendicular and parallel vectors. So we're looking at this guys. We're going to find out how much is gravity going to pull that object into the slope. And we're also going to find out how much gravity is pulling the object down the slope. So there's two components we're going to be examining here. We're going to call this component of gravity the original force gravity. That's this side of my triangle. We're going to have a 90 degree angle right here. We'll call this component of gravity force perpendicular because it is perpendicular to the slope that I'm outlining right now. Notice it's coming straight backwards, perpendicular to that surface. We're going to call this over here, this is force parallel. And that is the force that is parallel to the surface of the incline. Now, both these, force parallel and force perpendicular, are components of gravity. If I'm looking for the net force, I'm going to have to find the net force by comparing the forces that are acting on the object, either perpendicular to the surface or parallel to the surface. We know there's going to be a force of friction going backwards in this direction. We know that the object is going to have a force normal. That's what the surface of the plane is going to exert on the object. And we also know that, that there's a downhill portion of gravity. Gravity is kind of pulling it downhill. I'll draw my little arrow right there. All right, and That's actually going to be my force parallel. So that right there is going to be the same value as that. All right, guys, let's crunch the numbers here. If this is a 25-degree angle, that means this here is a 25-degree angle, too. And if I start using sine and cosine, I should be able to find out what my force perpendicular and my force parallel is. Now, do recall, guys, that this leg of the triangle right here, my hypotenuse, is actually 400 newtons. The next step of the process is going to be now to either solve for the force 
perpendicular or the force parallel. And I'm going to just go over quickly here with the force perpendicular. Force perpendicular, the formula is mass gravity times the cosine of theta. Now theta is our 25 degree angle right in there. Mass gravity is actually this 400 newtons that is down here, so it's actually already solved for us. So the force perpendicular is going to be equal to 400 newtons, we can call that a negative, times the cosine of 25 degrees. Let's crunch those numbers, guys. And we find out the force perpendicular is going to be equal to 362.5 newtons. We'll call that negative because it is going downwards and kind of into the slope. So here I have my force perpendicular. And that's this value right here. So that value, I'm going to put it over here, is going to be equal to 362.5 newtons. The good news is that that's also going to give us the force normal. So the force normal will also be equal to that because an equal and opposite effect, 362.5 newtons, except the force normal is positive because the upwards direction is also known as positive. The force parallel is the next thing we're looking at. So the force parallel is also known as the downhill portion of gravity. Gravity is tugging downhill on the object. That's why the object is going to roll downhill. And it is known as the force parallel because it is the force that is parallel to the surface. The, uh, the formula for the force parallel is going to be mg sine of theta. And as we saw before, mg is going to be equal to the weight of the object. Negative 400 newtons. And this will be multiplied by the sine of 25 degrees. So let's crunch those numbers, dudes. And we find out the force parallel is equal to negative 169 newtons. And we're going to leave it at negative 169 newtons. It's negative because leftward is considered negative and downward is also considered negative. So now I've solved for this here, the force downhill, courtesy of gravity, is negative 169 newtons. So this value right here, and I have to sub in right now, is 169 newtons. Look at that, negative. It's getting crowded in here. I'm going to take two seconds to clean it up a tiny bit for us, guys. All right, guys. Next thing we're going to solve for is the force of friction right over here. And the force of friction is going to be equal to normal force times the coefficient of friction. So the force of friction is going to be the normal force. The normal force was 362.5 newtons multiplied by the coefficient of friction of 0 0.19. Let's crunch those numbers. And the force of friction in this case is 68.9 newtons. It is getting crowded in here, so this is going to be equal to 68.9 newtons. All right, dudes, we're getting close to the end of the, the problem here. Let's check out what we've done. Kind of have lost track a little bit. We found the force of friction. We found the normal force. The next thing we have to do is confine the net force and then the acceleration. The net force is actually pretty easy. What I want you to look at is look at all the forces perpendicular. That is in this direction. What are all the forces? And you see that I have a normal force of 362.5 newtons. And that's going to balance out with my 362.5 newtons of my perpendicular force. So the net force in the perpendicular direction, they cancel each other out. The exact same value. Positive is 362.5 and negative 362.5. The net force between the two is zero. Now, how about on the parallel? That's different. So I'm looking at the forces. In this case, we have the force friction going backwards, up the hill, and rightwards, and the force of gravity, which is a parallel, downwards and leftwards. And you have to compare those two to get the net force. So I'm going to bring it up in this right-hand corner. The force net is going to be equal to force parallel plus force of friction. Let's throw those numbers in here. We have negative 169 newtons plus... 68.9 newtons, 
and the net force is going to be equal to roughly, almost exactly, 100. And the net force will be equal to 100.1 newtons. That's going to be negative because it's leftward and downward. So now we have a net force. A net force has a value. Because there is a net force, we also know there's going to be acceleration. So I'm going to use this now and say the net force is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the object. Let's plug the numbers in here. I have a negative 100.1 Newton net force. I have a mass of over here 40.8 kilograms and the question is what is my acceleration? So let's solve for acceleration. We'll have 100.1 divided by 40.8 and my acceleration is going to be equal to 2.45 meters per second squared and that is going to be a negative value because it's leftward and downward. All right, guys, that kind of wraps up everything here. We've made an awesome free body diagram, looked at uh, all aspects of this, the force perpendicular and the force parallel, and I hope you got it. Next time, maybe press pause, try the problem from the beginning by yourself, and see if you match my answer on the end. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Have a good night. Later.